this is what I sort of come to understand is that I did have a lot of pain in me and I was a really sensitive kid and the world was really sort of overwhelming to me. And so, you know, when I started smoking pot, like, you know, when I was younger and drinking, you know, it really sort of gave me some relief from that. And as I got older, when I was like 17 and I was smoking pot every day, you know, it still gave me that relief. But the more and more that I smoked pot and drank, it was like I kind of built up a tolerance to those drugs. And so they just weren't doing it for me anymore. You know, I wasn't getting the same relief that I had gotten. So I really started looking for more hard drugs, you know, to help me to find something that would kill that pain. And um, at first it was just like mushrooms and acid. And then I tried ecstasy and coke. But the way that I tried crystal was really sort of an accident. I mean, I didn't really know anything about crystal meth except for that maybe it was like, you know, in the Midwest, you know, like hillbilly kids did it or something. I mean, I didn't know anything about it. But um, my friend, we were up all night doing acid, actually. In the morning, he was like, man, I just feel terrible. You know, maybe I should get some speed and we'll feel better, you know. So I was like, all right, you know, so we went and we bought some speed. You know, I didn't even really know that speed was crystal meth. I mean, I just didn't even think about it. And, um, you know, I did a line of it with him. And I'd say, like, I don't know, like, when I was growing up, I'd always heard, like, you know, heroin, never do heroin. Like, if you do heroin, you're going to get, you know, addicted instantly. And, I mean, I was scared to do heroin because I had that drilled into my brain as I was growing up. But I, I didn't have those same warnings about speed or crystal meth. So, you know, I was really surprised when I did that first line. And it was like my whole world just was like went from, you know, black and white to technicolor. I mean, it was just this like transformation. It was like this feeling like this is what I've been missing my whole life. I mean, I remember saying something like, man, like, I wish I'd been breastfed on this. Like, this is it. You know, this is that thing that I've been missing. And so I would say that, you know, instantly, if not physically addicted, I mean, I wasn't instantly physically addicted, but I was instantly emotionally addicted. And having felt that feeling, you know, it became my obsession to keep feeling that feeling, you know, over and over and over again. Yeah, that was how it started. The thing about crystal meth, besides that, you know, amazing feeling that you get when you first do it, you know, maybe like a day later, you know, when you start to come off of it, it's like the opposite of that. It's like the worst feeling I've ever experienced in my whole life. And it's just like this, your insides are all sucked out and your brain, you know, is just being totally like on fire or something. I mean, it's just like really just this unbelievable despair and, and pain and stuff of coming off of it. So, you know, I had to um, keep using so that I didn't feel that way. But there were moments, you know, within my using where I knew, you know, I have to stop doing this. I mean, this is like, it had destroyed, you know, my relationship with my family. It destroyed my relationship with my friends. You know, I couldn't hold a job. I, um, you know, was just crazy and out of my mind a lot of the time. And a lot of times it wasn't even really that fun, you know, after a while. It just was more about me trying to stay well rather than like, you know, feel really spectacular. So I had, you know, instances of wanting to get clean. I was never able to make that decision on my own. I had to be really um, coerced to get into these treatment centers. What my dad did, and it wasn't what he, he, this is what he learned to do, and it's what my mom learned to do. And it sort of, I guess, went against, you know, everything that they wanted to do, but they just had to do it because that's what everyone told them was that. They basically said, you know, Nick, we're not going to have anything to do with you we're not even going to talk to you. We're not even going to answer your phone calls unless you get into a treatment center. For me, that was not what I wanted to hear. I mean, I wanted to be able to go home and, you know, sleep it off and eat a good meal or, or whatever. But, you know, they weren't going to take care of me anymore, you know. And so because that was their message that, you know, get into treatment, get into treatment, get into treatment, when I'd get to a place of absolute, you know, desperation, I would call them and they would help me get into treatment. And it didn't work like the first time or the second time or the third time. Well, I think that it helped. I mean, I think that I started to learn about this disease, which I think it is a disease. You know, I started to learn about the disease of alcoholism and drug addiction and to recognize that I had this disease. I also started to take a look at myself and start to examine, you know, some of the reasons why I was trying to kill myself all the time, why I hated myself so much. But it really was like five treatments before I guess I was at a point where I was really, really able to say, you know what, like, I'm not going to fight this anymore. 
I don't know what I'm doing. I'm totally, you know, scared. I've destroyed my life, and I'll just do whatever it takes, you know. This last treatment center that I went to, they had us doing, like, a lot of these, like, weird alternative therapies that I thought were really, like, ridiculous, but then turned out to be really amazing. Like, their whole theory was just basically, like, that the human body traps all this trauma in it. So it's like, if you go through something like, you know, your parents get a divorce or you see someone get hit by a car or anything, it's like the human body will, like, trap that feeling, that trauma feeling in it. And unless you let yourself feel it and let yourself go through all the emotions. They talk about um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and the stages of grief and everything. So unless you go through, like, you know, the denial and the anger and then the, you know, sadness and acceptance, ultimately, um, you know, you you can never move on. And for me, I'd never let myself feel anything because I'd always just pushed it down, whether it was with drugs or alcohol or um, relationships or exercising compulsively or you know, whatever it was, it was like I was always doing everything I could not to have to feel anything bad. And so at this treatment center, they like brought me back through all these painful experiences and sort of encouraged me to really like feel them, you know, for the first time and go through that process of grieving them. It was super painful and really, really hard. And I mean, just taking a look at myself and seeing all the mistakes I made and recognizing that, you know, I am insecure and feel ugly and scared and, you know, that's part of who I am. And as long as I'm pretending to be someone else and as long as I'm not letting myself, you know, feel those things that I went through, I'm not going to get better. So, yeah, I really started just like listening to what they were saying and participating in the program. You know, I also was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I got on some medication and stuff, which I'd had mixed feelings about being on medication, but I, I tried it. And, you know, I found that, you know, it was a little piece of the puzzle, you know, it just, it wasn't like a cure-all, but it helped. You know, I really just went through this sort of rebirth process of going back over everything that had happened and letting myself feel it all. And I think that's the reason that I'm sober now. I think that that ability that I have now to be able to sit with myself in the quiet moments, you know, is something that I never had before. The reason I really thought it was important to share my story is that, well, when I was growing up, even more than about drugs or anything, I mean, I had this feeling inside of me that was like, I felt really scared all the time and alone and insecure and wary of the future and confused. And I had all these sort of dark thoughts and these sort of perverse thoughts or weird thoughts. And you know, I just was really kind of like ashamed of who I was. The thing that was really, I think, the most helpful to me when I was growing up was, you know, when I started reading other authors. The first book that I read that was really like this was when I read Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller. It was like, oh my God, like I can't believe other people, you know, think like this and other people have turmoil inside of them and these weird thoughts. And it just made me feel like I wasn't so crazy, you know. And so I went on to read other authors' work, authors who were really just sort of unrelentingly honest and wide open, you know, and that gave me so much strength and made me feel less alone, you know, so I wanted to contribute something like that, you know, give back in that way. You know, in terms of a young audience, I think what's really cool is that we've been touring around and stuff, and I have been able to see, like, when people come to the readings that we're doing and stuff that, you know, there'll be sort of an older crowd of parents and stuff that are really coming for my dad, I think, and there's this younger audience that's, you know, really coming to see me. But in the process of us both telling our stories, it's like sort of secretly or something, they're able to get this other side of the message because, yeah, I mean, when I was using, I never thought really more than for a second about how I was affecting my parents and what they were going through. And I think as a parent of a drug addict, it's really, really hard to understand because addiction is so confusing. And I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's like against all logic or whatever. For them to kind of get a little insight through my story and for you know people my age and younger to get an insight through my dad's story, I think is really sort of just this amazing opportunity that we're able to present.